Welcome back to the Lions and everybody. Welcome back to the Lions and episode number uh, 113. 113. Lucky 113. Please continue to rate and review at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen. Also watch us at our YouTube channel, the Lions Den with Brent Moore and Jason Collings. We do have a clips channel. We will be getting more clips on there as well. And as always, for your members only content, behind the velvet rope. Okay. Yeah. Very inclusive. Patreon.com slash the Lions Den pod. That's Patreon.com slash the Lions Den Pod. <clears throat> how you guys doing? Oh, panic attacks all day. I was going to say, you're having a. Yeah. Oh, by the way, how was Atlanta? Uh, <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. We'll, yeah. we'll be a week late on the recap. Yeah. So, um, La Jolla Comedy Store was amazing. Don't have any I details. I love that confidence. Don't have any details yet because it hasn't happened, but it's going to happen and this is going to come out after it happened. Que no? Can no? Pretty much it. We got business though. Guys, come see us in Nashville. Oh, that's right. We got Nashville. What is that? July 9th and 10th? July 9th and 10th. July Zanies 9th and Nashville. 10th. Zany's Nashville. And uh, August 20th and 21st at Gotham Comedy Club, New York mm -hmm. City, baby. We and are going to be doing it. And then a live show, Lines Den live show, LA, July 24th. Jewel. Okay. Some people were asking me and I couldn't remember the date. July, you know, I couldn't. No, it's funny because we do this every the last like month we've done every time was seventeenth, twenty fourth. It because it was wasn't it originally it was the 17th, okay. So forget the seventeenth. <laughs> yeah, now everyone's gonna be more. It's though. July. The the live show in Los Angeles collab with Don't Tell Comedy is July twenty fourth, right? July twenty fourth. Yeah. TBA on the venue, the venue TBA to be announced. It'll be a pop up indoor venue. Right. Uh, still working on it. Don't know where it is. Somewhere in LA. It's gonna be stand up and then like a live kind of version right. of the podcast after few people ask me on social media should i get the plane ticket i don't want to get it if if it's not going to happen if you're looking to wow. travel to la to come see us the show is 100 percent happening july 24th in the city of los angeles and uh uh mufasa members uh still applies mm -hmm. uh same thing same you thing. plus one free tickets if you're a mufasa same thing, member same thing uh, and people don't know what the fuck that means. It's a Patreon level. Right. <laughs> Some we're definitely going to, and also we're going to vlog. We're going to do a lot of vlogging at, at the show, but we're not going to do a live stream. It won't be a live stream, but we may be able to figure out a way to record it for Patreon. We're working right. on it, we're but, working but on bare it. minimum, it'll be a great show. And so, it's kind of our first trial run of doing like a live version of this. So get those Samsonites packed, kids. Samsonites? This is the second time. <laughs> Remember from Dumb and Dumber? That's how I know Samsonite. Yeah. What Remember when I said it earlier, you said, what's a Samsonite? Yeah. It's a suitcase. It's oh. a name brand. Oh, of a, that's right. It's Remember a luggage, Dumber? briefcase. Like, oh, her last name yeah. Samsonite. Yeah. I was way off. <laughs> Simmet, Sonson, Swinson, Sonson. Oh, Samsonite. I was way off. <laughs> I love that movie. So yeah, get your asses out here. Get your asses out here. I'm doing Supernova Comedy tonight. Yeah. In Hollywood. It's probably one of the best... Um, outdoor shows in in the Shit, in the game the right now it's gonna be a fire lineup it's me nick kroll uh jessel nick's on it nikki glazier is on it um uh, jeff die is on it my buddy lj is on it it's gonna be a fun show i'm on the early so, show the seven o'clock so it's gonna be i still did, haven't gone there yet when does it get dark does it get what time does it get it's like dark? eight now okay so yeah it's gonna be we're gonna be under the lights baby so you'll be in a sunset mm-hmm that's I'm, nice. a, I'm the sunset comic. It's very romantic. Yeah. But yeah, this show is, I mean, I've, I've done it once and I've gone and hung out a few times. It's a lot of fun. I'm excited though because my brother's coming tonight. Oh, nice. My brother's oh, nice. coming tonight. I had a cool Monday, by the way. What'd you do? So Monday, I'm, I had nothing planned. And I was, I, I kind of was fighting a migraine and I was laying around doing nothing. I don't like to lay around during the day. It makes me feel like a piece of shit. But that day I was, <laughs> I was just, I mean, you know what? I'm going to lay down. I'm going to watch. I'm going to binge. I watched that show, The Manifest, and I finished. What's The Manifest? The Manifest is about this airplane that took off to, to Jamaica, and when they were coming home, they went through some time warp thing, and the people on the plane, it just felt like a turbulence thing, and then they landed, and everything was fine, but when they got off the plane, there was all these emergency vehicles coming up to the plane, all these people, and they walk up, and they're like, what's going on? He goes, this, this, this plane took off 2013. Uh, oh, whoa. And he goes, Wait. they're like, your plane took off in 2013. And the guy looked at the pilot and goes, 
It's 2018. In other words, the plane disappeared for five years. Hold on. And then landed and showed up. But as far as the people on the plane knew, nothing happened. It was just normal. This is a documentary? Yeah, this really happened, Will. You fucking idiot! I thought you said do- I thought you said like a documentary. No, no, no! Or I was binging a. It's a. It's a. It's a. Oh. It's a sh- TV show called. Oh, Manifest. sorry, dude. It's so. Me. I. W- I mean, your mind was about to be blown because you're just like explaining this Wait, time warp as, a, as like that's a real thing. Just huh? disappeared for like five years. Disappeared, right? Well, you, also, yeah. you watch so many documentaries. I, do. I just I assume I when you talk about a docus. thing, a murder oh. thing, I'm like, well, this is why a documentary. Yeah. I'm Doc J, dude. That's my my nickname. Doc, Doc J. J. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so I'm laying around in bed, and then Joe Coy texts me. Yeah. And all he texts was, and this was at like four o'clock in the afternoon. He texts, "Yo," and so I just text him back, "Hi," and then he says, "What are you doing tonight?" Like, I, what? Maybe we're gonna go hang yeah. out because he kept me out. Of, me and Joe went to the dude. You know how I am about eating after seven o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Joe and I the other night went to Denny's in North Hollywood. Oh no. The bad one. And we were there till almost three in the morning, <laughs> eating wow. all of the food. Wow. I paid for it for wow. two days. I felt so guilty. I went to the gym twice a day for two days. And I still feel like fat piss shit. Anyways, <laughs> it was after that night. He hits me up. He's like, what are, you, what are you doing? And I said, nothing. He goes, do you want to do a spot on my show tonight? I was like, oh, fuck yeah. That'd be awesome. So the improv on, in Hollywood is closed on Mondays. Joe had them open the club to do a show that they were calling an evening with Joe Coy. This shit sold out in 10 minutes. It's crazy. That's really crazy. And What's it, a quick question about logistics of opening the club? Does he like pay all the people to come or just, or does well, he they're just gonna, say, the club's going to make money anyway. Right. Cause of all the drinks and stuff. They're, they're some, they so, not just and the tickets, that. the tickets, they yeah, yeah, sold yeah. out. They sold out in 10 minutes and then the, they, they're, the drinks and then Joe's buying everybody drinks. Of course. The yeah. place was sold out. Joe bought everybody a shot in the audience. That's so cool. In the audience, and in the everyone, That's so cool. the not bar, just bartender. Yeah, yeah, not just us, not just us. Like yeah. the, the homies, everybody. He was, I'm buying the entire room a shot, and then wow. he was buying. Like he's so funny when he like makes fun of people. Then he's like nice to them. Yeah, and he buys them a beer, and you know this one guy was wearing really super tight <laughs> white jeans, and Joe was just burying him right, and then he gives him a hat and signs it, and then buys huh. him a beer. But anyways, with the show was incredible. And, uh, you know, it was a pretty good lineup. It was me, uh, Andrew Lopez, a guy named Dumbfounded. Um, Joe Torrey showed up, did a guest spot. Tiffany Haddish, Haddish was the surprise guest who showed up. Um, Eric Schwartz was on it. Um, wow, Eric Schwartz. Yep, King Batch was so on long. it. It was a good, fun show. It was a fun show. But, yeah, it was like one of those nights where it just completely took a turn from this could just be – me going to sleep early with a migraine, but now <laughs> I'm doing a sold out show at Joe at the Improv. Yeah, that's so and w- which was great because I got to get introduced to. Remember the, the few episodes ago we were talking about how the bookers of these clubs are pretty much kind of gatekeepers to our career. Yeah, and, and, and then they change, and then they change. So after the pandemic, there's this girl. She's not new to the company. She's been with the Improv. I say girl, she, woman. She's a grown up. She's been with the improv for 30 years. I mean, 20 years ago, she was booking the Hollywood improv. Whoa. Jeez. You know, and then she's just kind of winning. Now she's in charge of like all of them. She books Irvine, Ontario, um, um, Brea and, and, and such. And so I've been emailing her and with, to no avail to like, and then and she responded once and said, just, you know, send me your avails, give me your phone number, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right, never heard anything. So then I get to, sh- I, Joe gets me on the show Monday, and so I got to meet her, and she's like, been hearing your name all over the place, but I have this, my process is as I, I like to see the comedians. And I'm like, I, I can respect that. Yeah. And then so she saw me, and, and you know, good thing for me, I had a pretty solid set. I mean, it was. And what a great show for her to see you on. Right. Like, just a so, banger. Yeah. Just a show. banger That's of a show, right. sold out, happy audience. Yeah, Let me yeah. tell you how freaking happy this audience was and how loyal his freaking fans are. You know how sometimes when a show's going too long, you could see the audience going, dude, can we just finish? Can we yeah. just wrap this up and get to that show started at eight o'clock? It ended at 1230. No way. Wow. Because after we all did our first of all, we all did guest spots, right? But they weren't five minutes. We were all of us did 15 minute sets. Holy shit. Right. And then Joe goes on, does his hour. Whoa. Brings Joe Tori on. They do a thing. No, no, Joe Tori went on before Joe. Then Joe's on stage, does his whole hour or whatever it was, and then Tiffany Haddish shows up. She comes on stage, and the two of them just do a whole thing for another hour. 
It was crazy. They're telling stories about when you know before they made it and stuff. Tiffany's throwing money into the audience. <laughs> I mean, I mean wow. and I'm not talking. Just I'm like talking make it crowd. Hundred dollar right? bills. She's it's just insane. giving them into the what audience. What a fucking life. This lady comes out into the bar where I'm standing and she goes, Tiffany Haddish just gave me $100. You want a shot? Wow. And then she buys me a shot. She goes, this one's on Tiffany. <sighs> yeah. Damn. What a fucking night. Dude, it was crazy. And then the, to have the booker be like, you're amazing. You'll definitely be hearing from me. Uh, and oh, it, nice. it, it was so amazing cool. to, to bring some of you guys behind the scenes of how this works out here. It it was, I on the way home, I realized, oh, wow. After being a paid regular there, my name and face on the marquee multiple times a month. Then a pandemic happens. And now I basically had to, I kind of had to re-audition yeah. such a to get back into that club. You're never comfortable. Never. That's why you can't sleep. Sorry for yelling. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. Don't sleep. But yeah, man, you got to just, that's why I tell people when they come out to LA, yo, don't ever think the grind is over. Yeah, totally. The grind will constantly be grindy. But I also have a question for like on the beha- on for the book or being like, I want to see people first. So mm-hmm. let's say like, like for me, for example, like how would I even get in front of her? That's the thing. Do you know what I mean? J- exactly how I got in front of her. Just on, on a happy accident. Happy yeah. accident. But yeah. also it wasn't an accident. Joe no, of hit course. me up the next day. And he was like, I did that on purpose. Right, right, right. I need you. To, and then that kind of thing. Right. So like maybe Brent and I can become, get into a position where we can go. Yeah. There's right. this guy named Will Burkhart. Don't let him Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here yeah, we go. Yeah, Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm outside of the door. Guys. You got posters in the side Guys. with your face anti. <laughs> yeah, he really bombed Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't say that. Yeah, man. It was, but yeah, it was That's uh, so cool. That was, uh, I mean, yeah. And then to do the, that and then to have the show tonight, it was awesome. I felt really good about taking last night off. I hate taking nights off. Yeah. It, it just really, Me too. especially after the Pandy Dandy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you, I, I said, I've said this over and over again. I'm, I look at this whole pandemic thing as a reset. This is a huge reset for me. And, and you know, it, and so taking nights and i don't like to take time off you know success don't sleep <laughs> no so, i yeah, agree with last you night i felt a little better about staying in t- uh getting some sleep taking my vitamins it's nice to earn my veggies it's nice earning a night off that's yeah. how i always feel yeah. i want to earn it yeah i'm working my ass off and earn it yeah know. that's how i feel about vacations me too like people always want to go on trips with me and shit and i go i gotta I, I, something has to happen in my life that i earned that that's trip right. otherwise yeah. i'll just be sitting there anxious at the pool going like I, I should be writing. I should yeah. be working yeah. on the same exact. Doesn't it blow your mind when you go on social media and you see how many people that like you don't you know you know they don't have a job and they're always on vacation? Yeah, always posing on someone else's boat. Yeah, yep. always you know chilling on someone else's dollar. Oh man, that makes me mad. I'm not talking about women. <laughs> <laughs> and B, you've been doing spots. Uh, I did the comedy store, and uh, I had a great time. Oh, man, I missed that place. Yeah, that that first night was actually the Friday spot was was. Uh, Felt a little like vintage store, dude. We got to talk about that night. That crowd was weird. Uh, Wait, they, yeah, what they happened? They just weren't good. But it was but, in the OR or the main room? OR. But it was all right because they were know, good. I was on that show. They were good. well. I they were they oh, were good. When you the opened, big, right? Yeah. No, that was Saturday. Well, I, I did Friday too. No, I, was it? Was I on the Saturday? Saturday I, I I liked the Saturday crowd. Did I do Saturday? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, you yeah, were yeah, the yeah. Saturday show. Yeah, right, right. So that crowd was was good. Friday one was like almost vintage and i missed that that mm. was kind of fun what, so explain what do you mean what you mean by that well they're not laughing they they're not back clapping when, the when you go was, up you know they're just yeah yeah they're just in their own heads or they, whatever back in the day whenever even when the or was full most of the people in there it felt like they just stumbled in because they yeah. had nothing else better to do you know yeah and they hated you yeah. you didn't know why yeah. so but i just stayed in the pocket and by the end it was great and then Saturday was just like back to what the store's been, which was and then, and then I go, I'm over, I'm at, I finished my spot. I'm, I'm hanging oh, that's out. That's right. Chappelle, Lacey and I were kicking it at the, at the comedy store. And then I get a text that says, yo, come to the laugh factory. I was like, okay. Oh, wait, a text from who? Uh, Chris D'Elia. Oh, so <laughs> you just said you got a text. Thing. I got a text. And so I go over there. It, I felt like I walked back in time. It was awesome. Felt like yeah. 2007 at the laugh factory. Dom Irera. Uh, uh, Fraser Smith, Dane Cook was on stage. Joe yeah. Coy was coming up. You know, Chris was there. It, it was like, it was like back in the day. Back shit. in the day. So I'm hitting Brent. You got to come to the Laugh Factory. Yeah, he said, come to the Laugh. We Factory. weren't even doing spots. We yeah. were just. It was just up in the VIP hanging. That's and it crazy. was crazy. It yeah. was. Awesome. It was fun. Fun as hell. Yeah, Shoka told me about that. He was like, bro. That yeah. Was he there? 
Shoko was there. Yeah, he was um, like, dude, you missed the fucking night. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, it was shit. crazy. Shit. <laughs> Shoko, uh, Chappelle, uh, Lenochi was there. A um, uh, couple couple girls. Uh, um, um, Mandy Martino came and hang out, hung out. Uh, her friend Kiki. Kiki, she's great. They, they, uh, All these people were just like, and it was one of those things where you're, you could tell the people that, that are new because they're looking around going, are you fucking oh, kidding yeah. me? Oh, yeah. This is crazy. You know, and your boy was there that runs the park show. Oh, Bryson. Yeah, Bryson oh. came up to me. He's like, what's up, man? Do you remember me? I'm like, uh, of course I remember. You have the show with the June bugs. <laughs> <laughs> you have the show with June bugs and a crippled dog. Yeah, that was fun. That was unexpected and out of yeah. nowhere. I was heading back over the hill. And the next thing you know, I'm like, okay. So I'm back to when I was 24. And you walk in and you're like, hey. It really feels like sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. <laughs> and we were being so loud, so oh, disrespectful. So disrespectful, show. yeah. How was the crowd and stuff? Was that? Was it it just... was standing room only. It yeah. was like it was like pre-pandemic. Damn, right back to it. Back in the day. Yeah, it's like it didn't exist or something. So yeah. weird, isn't it? So odd. Fuck. Yeah, it's a trip. It was uh, it was a lot of fun, but it was yeah. It, it, it's so I, I'm I'm so. There was a long time where I was like really nervous about the hanging out and getting back into the scene, and I'm like, are we gonna am I gonna get sick? Am I gonna now that I'm fully vaccinated? I'm I'm watching the numbers still. They're plummeting. And so it feels amazing to just walk into these clubs and hang. I'm telling you, the other night, uh, Monday night at the Hollywood Improv, sitting at the Improv bar, having a drink at that bar. My son yeah. was with me. I'm sitting there with my son having a drink. You know, Joe Coy's son and my son haven't seen each other since Joe Coy's boy was like four. Yeah. And he's he's a, he's 18 now. And Jonathan's 26. And we're all hanging at the the, the Improv bar and just, you know, having drinks. And, 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 and you know, um, who else? So many people. It was just... Asif Ali was on the show. Oh yeah, him and Asif. his brothers were all there. We were all hanging. It was Jesus, dude. It was a. It felt like oh, we're back, you know. And and the crazy part is thinking this place as of yesterday was closed. Yeah, that was a last minute deal where they called and said open. We're gonna do an evening with Joe Coy, and it sold out in ten minutes. So wild. We were talking about this. I think mean, we talked yesterday. B, yeah. we were talking about how like the Joe Coy thing happened, and it's crazy. How, like your phone is like the gateway to your career yep. sometimes basically yeah. all the time any yeah. like you, a text you get a call you get an email you get it's like that's why i feel like i always have to have my phone nearby. i always have it near me and i, tr- I it's try not, not for to... like oh, checking instagram it's like no in case some shit fucking happens i can't tell you, you know? how many times i've i've responded late to an email and said yeah yeah i'll do it and then the person goes oh you didn't respond yeah. so i gave it to somebody else yeah. i'm it's like crazy. Ah. it's tough because i i hate being on my phone I so I'm, I'm always <laughs> i'm always away from it mm-hmm. But then it's like we live in such a different world now where I'm getting yelled at for not having my phone on. You have to. It's we're, it's we have to assimilate to this this yeah. new way. I mean, yeah. it took me a long time, man. I'm I'm still struggling with it. Yeah. I'm still struggling with wait, me going on stage and being good isn't good enough. Yeah. I have to do all these other things and I have to be at I mean at the and also entertainment the entertainment the entertainment industry in Brent you're going to agree with this 100%. It is not a 9 to 5 gig. No. It's 24/7. Yeah. I got a I got a text the other day at 2 o'clock in the morning saying, "Here's so and so's email. He's he's waiting to hear for your avails." Yeah. I said and I text back, "Now?" <laughs> yeah, right now. <laughs> wow. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> That's you know. That's really funny. Yeah. Now? <laughs> yep. Oh my but god. Yeah. It's a trip. Skis. I'm trying. But it is man. weird. I, all of a sudden it's like also, oh, COVID doesn't exist anymore for everyone, right? Because now everybody's just hanging out as if they were like, right. like they were on that goddamn plane. Yeah, the documentary for a year and a half, right? Yeah, yeah. on the on the documentary, yeah, the about documentary the plane about the plane disappeared the for five years and then re-showed up because we live in that world now. Um, yeah, it's a trip. And now, I'm, like, I, before I got here, I stopped at Starbucks, and now I'm finding myself going, "Oh wait, there's some people are still wearing masks." When a couple weeks ago, I was like, "These motherfuckers aren't wearing masks. Oh yeah, put your masks on." Now I'm like, look at these idiots with the masks yeah, like, on. Ooh. We're so weird as humans, the way our brains work. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. so bizarre. Yeah. How yeah. used to it and shit. It is, I think, important to have that perspective of like, man, this shit could be taken away real quick. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, I, fucking... that's why I considered that whole 2020 a reset yeah. and a reality check to everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Things can change on a freaking dime. Mm-hmm. I said freaking. Are you proud of me? It's good. Oh, yeah. Even good but this think... episode. Yeah, I think I'm I feel trying. like he was I've swearing. said it a maybe few I'm, times. I'm so but... used to you saying "fuck," I just don't even hear it yeah, anymore. <laughs> it's what it is. It's what that's what it is. And and I watch, I watch tape of me doing stand up, and I'm like, I can't, I can't put this up. Yeah. And I told you there's that the laugh factor, yeah, the laugh factor. and it's just there were a few comments that were like, "Hey, this is really funny," but man, he overused the word 
F U C K. Nice. F U C K. Ah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it. Just do it. Up Nike. Oh, man. I went down a wormhole of maybe because I look like one of them, but of uh, the deadliest catch. Just started watching you, clips of the deadliest look catch. Like you'd be a, yeah, right now a I crabber, do. but like, like a good looking, like a like a, like the good looking guy of them. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. think you should be lumped in with them. Has a crush on Brett. Thank you. Well, no, I think Will that's fair. has a crush on Brett. No, I think it's fair to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's not like, hey, man, you're better looking than the deadliest catch guys. This isn't exactly yeah, the somebody, yeah, it's compliment. <laughs> yeah, sorry, deadliest catch guys, you guys are beautiful. You went on a wormhole and then what? I just I just was saying like, wow, this is what a dangerous fucking job. But also like, well, I could do that. I was just having like all these feelings where you I was did. like, well, maybe I'll just go live on a boat. Did you have nightmares? Yeah, I had some nightmares about fish and about drowning because I just leave it on. And then it's because it was all YouTube clips. Next thing you know, it's fucking, you know, you're just waking up at 3 a.m. to the sound of a boat crashing. <laughs> Thing is, if you haven't seen Deadliest Catch, it, it, the, the title sounds like the, the thing that they're catching is deadly. No, they're, they're looking, looking for little crabs and shit. The deadly part is they're out in this incredibly high wave storm where the waves That's completely engulf nightmare. these boats. And these boats are designed for that. But, and it's one of those things if you get swept off, if you get swept overboard, That's you're done. Just... You're, you've disappeared immediately. I mean, immediately, yeah. immediately, you're a mile away from the boat. That's going, ah, fucking oh, man. Yeah. And Horrifying. hypothermia, too. Oh, man. One of the guys jumped on a walrus, I think. A what? Or like a sea lion. That's what it he was. He just jumped on it? Yeah, like off the boat onto it to try to lunge it, like get it away. And they were freaking out because it's like, dude, if he's in there for a minute, he'll have hypothermia. Yeah. Because it's all Alaska. But he was this crazy Samoan guy, Freddy, who was fucking hilarious. Freddy. Yeah, that yeah. job's also very seasonal too. They make their goal is to ca- get a certain amount of ca- catch a certain amount of whatever they're looking for, and they get this big bunch of money. Yeah, that will literally last them the rest of the year. I was year. gonna say they got to get paid well for that, right? Oh, oh yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Some of the boats was like you know like ninety three grand a crew member. Mm-hmm. That's not and the captain obviously per gets, crew member. You know, and they pull in like one point eight million or something. Jesus Christ! It's these Alaskan king crabs is what uh-huh. it is, right? And they only do it for a certain period of time. Yeah, yeah there's, it's, season. a, it's seasonal. And then you just not. make all, all six figures for like, and then yeah. you're just chilling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do that with like tankers too, like those yeah. uh, oil tankers. Dope. And then, and then, and then uh, long haul truckers do that shit too. Mm-hmm. They try to make their nut. You make a, a fortune amount. as one of those. One of my best friends does that. Just a truck, like cross country trucking. He's an eight, 18 wheeler. Yeah. He always hits me up and goes, going to try to make it to the Nashville show. Oh, cool. Going to try to make it to the Chicago show. Like he's, I'm trying to route my, he's trying to make his route come around to one of the shows that we're on on the road which is yeah. great but yeah he's now he's teaching about trucking he teaches he's he's, he's an instructor on how to oh. about i said that as a, jo- said that as a joke and, it, and you were like yeah, that's literally what he does exactly what it is <laughs> well, dude, those things, you, you don't just show up knowing how to in? yeah you don't just show up knowing how to drive one of those things ah. those things are fucking in- <laughs> i want to see well oh my <laughs> god <laughs> that's grinding the grind <laughs> i'm just fucking insane. Just like- <laughs> 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 Yeah, every time I see one of them like back up, I'm so impressed. God, I saw one of them. You know the uh, cute. You know the Trader Joe's uh, blue bottle Mendocino little thing. We saw a fucking giant trucker trying to drive through that little parking lot. You can see him being like, "Oh no, <laughs> this is seen, not where I should be right now." But have you ever seen one of those guys do some amazing shit? Oh yeah, like when they no. back into those stalls no. at the store. God. It's amazing. Yeah, like the shipping stalls or whatever the fuck it's called. F God, shit, son of a. Mm, I'm trying, I'm trying, <laughs> um, and then and they literally just a two pointer, boom, wow! I'm like, so oh, crazy. that's skillful. I do kind of see them sometimes on the road, being like, that looks relaxing. You know, you just that's your job. The, no boss being like, what are you doing, you piece the, of shit? The you're big just one that going. has an apartment attached to it. Yeah, I've seen those things. You're just oh, going, yeah. listening to podcasts. Oh man, <laughs> like, and then terrifyingly crossing lanes. Yeah. Here's 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 my problem though, because I watch too many murder documentaries. A lot of murders take place at truck stops. Mm. Really? Yeah. Good there's point. like there's like uh, truck stop hookers out there that like try to rob these. Aren't they called lot lizards? What? I think they're called a lot, lot, lizards? lot lizards. How do you know that? I've heard it. I've referenced before. Let me look it up. A lot lizard. Are you a lot lizard? No. No. <laughs> He's a lot twink. <laughs> I'm a lot <laughs> squirrel. Uh, squirrel. I couldn't find it. 
Uh, yeah, a trucker's term for a prostitute that works at truck truck stops. Truck stops or truck stops? I but truck apparently, these lizards, lizards are, are <laughs> these, these lizards. Apparently, these lizard bitches are <laughs> robbing truck drivers. Wow. But yeah, there's murders, these dude. Bitch these bitch lizards are murdering these fools. That's yeah. why I'm getting my movie. Amazon delivery late. There's a movie called Lot Lizard. No, a feature documentary about truck stop oh, sex workers in the United States. Said my favorite word, documentary. I'll yeah. watch that. There you what, go. what can I see it on? I think Prime. When did it come out? 2016. I'm going to watch that immediately. Yeah, there you go. Bye, guys. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Bye. I was wondering. Yeah. Lot Lizard. And it's on Prime? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. I wonder if they're talking about them murderous, murderous lizards. I mean, probably. Mm -hmm. Did you say probably? Probably. 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 Um, anything else, guys? I'm, I'm, uh... I don't know what else is going on. I mean... Can I, I, can I say something We're not in quick? Atlanta yet. Can I say something real quick? Yeah. What are those socks? Oh, my friends. They're actually pretty They look like kids, like Boba Fett socks or something. Oh, well, I don't know. He left them and my dryer's broken. So I was like... You're wearing are... someone else's socks? Yeah, these are the only ones that were clean that were in the house. That's kind of cute. That's adorable. I could never wear someone else's yeah. socks. Which friend? Gagne. Those look like... Okay, now it makes sense. They look like motorcycle socks or something. Yeah. Well, he's always, he actually, these are so comfortable. Like, I always do the cheap stuff, mm -hmm. and then he does all the expensive stuff, so I just Is noticed. that expensive? What, what? are they called? Yeah, Joy? Feels, feels expensive. Yeah, they look amazing. Joy what? Joyne. Joyne. Got it. Joyne. Joyne. It just sounds rich. Yeah, just yeah. don't. Just got to church it up a little bit. Got to church that shit up. Got to church, church that shit up. Church that shit up. I'm losing weight. I'm back at the gym. No back problems. Oh, that's I'm good. I'm lifting. I'm doing these. Nice. Oh, butterflies and then I'm doing or whatever. The reverse ones, and then I'm benching. Hey, hey, right. Do you have somebody you spot you when you're there? No. What am I a pussy? <laughs> no, I'm on Swears. the Nautilus. I'm not on the not. I'm on the Nautilus <laughs> machine. <laughs> I'm not doing free weights, man. What am I? Oh. The guy's just behind you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you are just holding your waist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, gym culture is so funny. People are constantly. I did a gym picture for the first time in my entire life. I just stood in front of the mirror and took my picture, did a mirror gym selfie. But people are literally there just for that. Yeah. I was there the other, I was there yesterday in the morning and this this group of three girls walked in. They looked about fucking 22 or whatever. Yeah. And it was all about the gram. And they had first of all they were very scantily clad. Might as well have been naked. These hoes my bell been naked. Huh. And they're in there just doing their they're but they're posing for each other and like you know, and and it's like, what I do is, you know, I'm a people watcher. I get on the treadmill, and and the way they're set up at my gym, it's a freaking awesome vantage point. I'm just treadmilling for 30 minutes, yeah, just looking at everybody. Of course, making fun of all of them, yeah, hating most of them. But it's it's a trip. I got a question: Why yeah. are the dudes that are a little bit older showing up to the gym in dress shoes and slacks? <laughs> Great really? Have you, have you seen that? No, I've seen like jeans and dude shirt. Like, belt. Yeah. Like yeah. a belt tucked in, dress shoes. <laughs> dress shoes. And just tss, tss. fuck. That's ridiculous. It's like they it's like they got in a fight with their wife after work mm -hmm. and just had to get it out yeah. so they didn't kill anybody. I never thought I'd be a gym guy. I didn't start going to the gym until uh the pandemic was twenty two thousand nineteen. I started at the gym and then I canceled my uh, my my membership. I didn't I didn't cancel it, I froze it because I didn't want to get cootie cooties. And this is how these big companies are too. They immediately, hey, we, we unfroze your account and we're charging you now. And I'm like, wait, no, that's my job to unfreeze my oh, account. Shit. So I have to call I should them. check into that. Yeah, so I have to call I'm, them. I'm not getting charged. What, what, which one do you go to? Built. It's right down there. Oh, by Alfred? Yeah, but now I have- I Is have it one of those small little indies? gym here. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm at LA Fitness. It's a bit, it's a bit corporate-y, but the one by my house- Yeah, people are in fucking dress shoes. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah, just all the also, corporate lines. I got a gripe. Here we go. You have a gripe? Yeah. What? You got your tent set up, LA Fitness, in front of a shopping mall or a shopping center, and you're trying to get people to join. Maybe don't have the people that are out of shape work in the tent. Oh. <laughs> it's 
a like, trip. Like you got the movie. Michelin man in a tight <laughs> polo going, come work out. Look what it's done for me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Get the ripped dudes there. Get the, the, the ripped guy and girl there. And give us, give us some motivation. Give us something to, to work towards. And this guy at this... What, <laughs> They used to post up out in front of my brother's business when my brother yeah. still had his martial arts school. And it's like, you're just making me want Jack in the Box. <laughs> That's it. What are you looking at there, Wilbur? Just email. Get them right Do we have some? Oh, yeah. Do nice. we have a lot? Sure. This is a mellow episode, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Because Brent feels like he's going to throw up. Brent is in about to travel mode. That's what it is. Yeah, I think so. I'm the same way. Nice little panic attack this morning, you know. I I'd like scary dreams about being late and missing everything. I Every, always do. Every time I do the road. Yeah, me too. Had it all last night. Yeah. Like, oh, I have 10 minutes to make a flight and I'm like, that security line's too long. Like, we missed yeah. the whole weekend. Like, that happened to me recently. So constant. I I'm I'm so used to carrying on. I do a, I do the carry on. And the first time in in a long time that I checked a bag, I didn't I forgot that the bag check closes at a certain time. So when I got to the airport, they're like, yeah, that, that flight, it's closed. I was like, no, I'm on the flight. I have a plane ticket. They're like, no, you, you can't check your bag. It's closed. I'm like, what? Because I, I don't get there as early as most people do because I have the TSA pre and I have the, the, the uh, you basically work, clear. You basically work at the airport with that type of permission. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, wait, what? I, because I'm so, but when you check a bag, you still got to get there super early. Because it, so this, was it Chicago? I can't remember where I was going. But my bags ended up on a separate flight than me. Where the fuck was that? And I had to go back to the airport the next day to get my bag or something like that. Oh, Jesus. I've never done that. That Yeah, it sucked. That happened on the way to Pittsburgh once, too. My bag ended up on a different flight. And one of of my openers or something had to fly, like, drive me back to the airport the next day to get my bag. Your bag's just in Hawaii with, like, lays on. Yeah, I had a better trip than you. <laughs> so, so dumb. It's got a Hawaii post- sticker on the fucking. Yeah, I didn't what? postcards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things, the, the handles up and That's shit. So goddamn dumb. <laughs> I hate that you thought of that joke and I didn't. <laughs> yeah, makes me really mad. Makes me the most mad. The most mad. But then cut to me with outside of the improv with a big. The anti, no, uh, yeah, yeah. my face. <laughs> I ever sh- did I tell you what Brad Garrett had? Brad Garrett did that too. They have at Brad Garrett's comedy club in Vegas. They have all those these really cool paintings of famous comedians, but they're they're paintings and they're beautiful. They're really well done. And when the whole Bill Cosby thing happened, they're like, "Should we take down the Bill Cosby one?" And Brad's like, "No." And he took a red spray paint can <laughs> and just went <laughs> Whoa. Just so did a, gangster. Did an anti and wow. it's, and it's still up. That's a way better way to do that. Yep. It's a very Brad wow. Garrett way to handle it. Hey, we got. We got. Uh, we want to go to the emails. Is yeah, let's do what it. We want to do. We going yeah. From, you guys uh, seem like you're in a hurry to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, no, I'm worried about. I'm going to throw up. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can, right, dude? You should have brought a bucket. I know. I know. Well, if we need to pause, just let us know. No. <laughs> Don't even pause. We're going to document that shit. <laughs> yeah, that's we're true. real here. Okay. All right, we got uh, one from Emily here. Fan fiction. Hey guys, there's a point to this and it's a good one, but it requires some backstory. And I want to say first and foremost that the Discord made me send this, so I'm not acting alone. Still got to figure the yeah, Discord. St- thing I out. still yeah. got to figure that out. Uh, yeah, someone uh, just send us a link to it in the email. Don't uh, just email it to us. Cool. Uh, so when I was growing up, like 12, 13, I was super into writing fan fiction. I would write mm. stories about my favorite brand, bands or Harry Potter or whatever I was obsessed with at the time. Unfortunately, I've destroyed all evidence of my writing because as a teenager, I was horribly embarrassed by it and wanted no one to ever read my ridiculous stories where I was best friends with Pete Wentz. Flash forward to today, one of my favorite podcasts, besides TLD, is called Fangasm, which reads erotic fan fiction. They read one story per session and one chapter per episode. It's hilarious and engaging. So great. Much like Erotic? Guys. Yeah. Then I had a thought. Does Undateable have any fan fiction? And guess what? It does. Huh. I present to you erotic, undateable fan fiction starring none other than Justin and Brett in a sexy bathtub scene. I'm no. so sorry, and you're welcome. Again, I blame the Discord group. Just to clarify, I did not write this. This is someone else writing it. I am not responsible for this. And this I is... am merely the messenger. Oh, it's this is David audio? Finn. I'm about to click on it. We'll see what uh, this is. Uh, oh, this is... Uh, oh, it's like writing. Yeah, you gotta read oh, it. Oh, oh, this is well, there's no way we can read this. <laughs> there's like a fucking it's like read an, a clip. Read one clip. I want to hear something. Um it's sorry for our list. It's a it's just long, like a script, basically. So it's mm-hmm. hard to uh fuck, I don't even know where to find this. Uh 
Justin knows Brett. He has known for so long. However, it's impossible to just sit in the bathtub with him and keep comfortable. <laughs> Brett never tried hitting on him, at least not that he remembers. He has no interest in him. That's for sure. Maybe not so sure. If it was just messing around, then what is this about? And why is Justin so uncomfortable? He's pretty sure of his own sexuality. He had never had any interest in men before, and it's for certain that Brett won't try to abuse him or anything. Uh, yet there he is with his legs spread wide in the bathtub. What is that about? The bubbles are starting to fade and soon they will still be seeing each other naked again. This is not the first time and probably won't be the last, but Justin can't get used to it. Not anymore. It feels so wrong because Brett has been his best friend for forever oh, and he's letting man. this simple detail change things around them. So Hilar the bubbles are wow. still fading. That's David Finn and yeah. you. We were in a bathtub together in a right. scene. Because I was, just, I think it was something about my comfort level with him being gay or something. Oh, that was an actual scene in the show. You were in a bath together. Yeah, and then it was like, Brent, <laughs> Brent is, were him. you naked in the bath? Oh my god, that scene was tough to get through too, because he was being so funny. Were you naked? Uh, no, no. You know, boxes. for the viewers and the listeners, Brent has no problem with on-screen nudity. Just I don't, I don't that. really give a shit. Like, if it's good, I'll do it. I told you that. I can't remember which episode we talked about that that student film that Brent and I did, and he insisted on a nude shower scene. <laughs> Yeah, I, if it's funny, I'm going to do it. It was hilarious. Oh, my God, this shit. I'm reading it. This shit's getting wild. Uh-oh. This is getting, like, dirty. Um, oh, so they <laughs> changed the script and everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Brett, re- so wait, wait, stay there. Um, <laughs> Brett re- requests as he places the condoms and lube over the shelf next to the bathtub and gets in again. I want to try something. <laughs> I feel really uncomfortable right. reading this. Please continue. He kneels before <laughs> Justin and touches his erection. It, it seems a little too much. Brett's hands are soft and warm, and he has such a gentle touch. It would be terrible. It, it would be a terrible lie of Justin said he isn't liking it. <laughs> Fuck, I don't like this. this. The next part. The next thing he feels, Brett is sucking on the head slightly, testing his uh, reactions. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. 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 That's great. Um, At least it's um, Justin that's getting blown, I guess. Yeah. Huh? Justin moans in approval, although he feels ashamed of moaning when he's with girls because of the pitch. He shouldn't feel that with a man, right? <laughs> Brett goes a little further, engulfing half of the shaft, and Justin holds himself as much as he can, what? trying to find I didn't even support, know this was a thing. But the edges of the bathtub are far too, too far to reach, so he has to take it on his own poor, shaky legs. <laughs> All right, I can't read anymore. Yeah, this. that's good. I'm getting too turned on. All right, that's good. wow. <laughs> this is legit. Jesus Christ, you gotta, you gotta, this is getting uh, way crazier. Too. You, you, gotta you, read Dave, it. you gotta tell David. You gotta tell David. I'm this definitely episode. sending this. I'm gonna. Today. I'll forward this email to you. Jesus yeah. Christ, that's that's so funny. Crazy. I like that she like made sure I didn't write this. <laughs> <laughs> I know, smart, because knowing us, we'd be like, wait, what? Wait a minute. Oh my gosh, that's... that was a trip! Wow. wow, I was hoping that it was some sort of like comic or something, like a, someone drew like. Oh, like, now but... that's coming. Here we go. I know. Yeah, and it is possible. Mm-hmm. All right, we got. Uh, remember this hope, this wonderful name, Hope Kilborn. Oh she yeah. Gave all the lines oh, yeah. down and inspired yeah. thoughts. Mm-hmm. Hey people, since it wasn't clear from my previous dick riddled email, I am a woman. Sad. Oh, hope. It's a woman. We didn't know. Oh, oh, that's yeah, right. I... I knew. Sadly, not a writer yet, but one day I'd like to be. For now, I'm just a single, super bored sea donkey stuck at home in the Northwest and happy what? to make the Time folks out. who crack me up a little. Bible. What the hell is a sea donkey? Yeah, what's a sea donkey? Hope, you need to clear up sea donkey. Yeah, we're not yeah. steaming. We're not I hope you got to clear up a lot of shit sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of little, Will, I'm sure you don't have... Oh. <laughs> A half-eaten ring pop for a penis. It's just hard to resist those jokes, especially since you guys have a dynamic straight from the Big Lebowski. It's actually huh. not bad. Um, here are a few more lines to inspire the thoughts. Uh, so we got Brent. Random dating thoughts. So this is, if you missed the last time we read this, it's like things that we would think, basically. Like Brent thoughts, yeah. Jason thoughts, me thoughts. Uh, I want From someone else. From, no, their own thoughts. But yeah, someone else wrote them. Thinking that that's what, in other words, it's their opinion of what we would think. Sure. Yes. That's a better way to say that. Thank you. Um, Fucking dumb. (laughs) I want people, so this is Brent, random dating thoughts. I want people to stop pitying pitying me when I go to places alone. Ever since I got ejected from my last relationship, I can't go anywhere without people looking at me with those sad puppy dog eyes. I'm walking into a place like Danger Zone is playing in the background feeling good. I'm thinking I'm Maverick and I get treated like Goose. Just instantly pitied. I'm walking into this place like a man, a strong man alone on a mission. Nothing sad about it. Save the pity for something else, like the number of matches on my Bumble profile. (laughs) (laughs) 
That's good. And then yeah. on the subject of Bumble, maybe I should use a picture of me taking a shit while checking Bumble and use that <laughs> as my profile picture on Bumble so girls know I'm invested. It sounds gross, but it's not. It shows I care. If I didn't, I wouldn't save such an event for one of the biggest feelings of relief of my day. I'm focused. I'm relaxed. Might as well be a massage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, these are pretty long, so I don't, I don't, I don't This whole episode is just me reading. Can I get a Jason? Yeah, Jason Random Thoughts. Uh, people who try to cancel comedians for being comedians need to find something better to do. Thank you. Give them a number to call, like 1 800 cancel with two L's because they're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and when it picks up, there can just be babies crying loudly on the other end for like two minutes. I love this. And then it just hangs up. They'll be so pissed about it, the number not working, they'll forget about why they called in the first place. Then they can do what they should have done in the first place, which is leave comedians the fuck alone. I'm yeah. Cool. It's like she's reading my mind. That's yeah. great. You got me, Hope. And then, Still want to know what a sea donkey is. Yep. And then I guess we'll do a quick one for me. Uh, random young people thoughts. People always say fake it till you make it. Uh, everyone likes to say that. It rhymes, so it must be true. But do I ever really have to make it? If all I have to do is fake it, can I just lie to everyone right now and say <laughs> I made it? Because people totally did. I made it. That's pretty funny. That's kind of true. That's good shit. Cool. Good shit, Hope. Thanks, Hope. Dig it. She's killing it. Sea donkey, huh? Now we get uh, Greg Bain, misheard sayings. I got a misheard saying for you guys. We talked. We were like, send us some misheard sayings. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Last episode. Uh, my friend told me the other day that he thought for his whole life until recently that the saying, we will play it by ear, was play it by year. And oh, I was like, play it by that. year. I'm going to play it by I feel year. Like a lot of people think that. going to have to play it by year. Like, what? But why would that even make sense? Okay, yeah. today we're going to act like it's 1995, guys. <laughs> yeah. Just going to play it by that year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's ridiculous. You know what? The, it, it, it's based on playing it by ear. In other words, you're 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 like if I oh I think grab the guitar and like I can I can yeah. just kind of go okay I know how to do this because you you know you're winging it but play it by year. Today we're gonna act like it's 2030. Yeah, I don't know what that means. 2030, baby. We're floating in our cars. Hover car. Uh, we got one from Florida, Hannah. Uh, hi, hey, hello, Lions. It's amazing it's that her first Hannah. name is Florida. I know. Yeah, I was just thinking that. It's beautiful. Uh, I've written in. Uh, I have written in a couple times before, but I know there is another Hannah who writes in way more often. So I decided to identify myself by the crazy state oh. that I live in, and uh -huh. previously talked about. Uh -huh. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. It's not a competition, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> listening to today's to listening to today's episode. Listening to tits. Listening to tits episode. Uh, this is probably the last one. And hearing Jason get dad mad about low key reminded me of a time I first used it, first heard it used. Sophomore year, my dorm had a communal kitchen on my floor. Some friends and I were in the in their baking cookies. Cute. When hi, my, when, my, hi. <laughs> when my roommate walks in drunk and beckons to one of my friends that she barely knows to follow her into the hall. My friend is confused but follows her. A few minutes later, she returns laughing and tells me that the roommate called her out to tell her that one of my male friends, Jake, was hot, but like low-key hot. Like low-key. She kept emphasizing low-key over and over. My friend didn't even know who Jake was or why my roommate felt the need to tell her this. It became a running joke between the two of us. We could never say it was say it just once and say it over and over. It's amazing that, the, that that's the word that they described to use to say how hot Jake is. Yeah. Low-key. So low-key that maybe he's ugly. ugly. Yeah. Ugly. You yeah. just brought him down to ugly. All right. Yeah, low-key hot. I've gotten up yeah. before. You know who's low-key hot? The Elephant Man. Yeah. It's so weird. <laughs> uh, that was over six years ago, so low-key has been around for a long time, and I don't think it's going away anytime soon. Uh, Sorry, Jason. Also, have you ever heard someone say high-key? Yep. My and brother is, brought that one up to me. Yeah, high-key is a thing. And is that better or worse? Huh. I wish I knew what it meant. What's the uh, Urban Dictionary bullshit for yeah, high-key? Low-key would be on the... Down low. See, when I ever hear low key right now, I'm thinking of the Marvel series. Yeah, the Marvel series. Which is really good, by the way. Is it? More yeah. uh, the opposite that. of low key and more straight up. So it eliminates any feelings of secrecy or shame implied by the word low key. Got it. That's so it's like, thing. so for example, you might be low key, have a crush on your best friend, secrecy but you'd be shame. high key excited if she asked you out. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's all dumb, but that makes the description makes sense. I'm going to start using it. High key, dude. I'm high key excited mm -hmm. for Atlanta. I'm going to go high king. <laughs> well, is that, am I using it right, guys? Loki, I, I don't think you didn't. <laughs> uh, now we got another one from Natalie. A low-key vibes. Oh, boy. Hi, guys. <laughs> I am dying laughing listening to Jason's rant about low-key and vibes. Two <laughs> language trends that need high-key to be set on fire. <laughs> I'm in the Midwest and can, and can vouch they are extremely overused outside of L.A. Oh, God. Uh, fucking yuck. Excuse my French. <laughs> 
Uh, just wanted to drop a note and thank you again for the pod. The comedy and random hilarity are helping me cope with the recent unfortunate events, uh, multiple deaths in the family, health issues, work stress, and all of your vibes are a welcome break from my everyday life lately. Um, oh. Laughter, even at the expense of Jason's anger levels, is definitely healing. Natalie. Nice. Very Way to bring sweet. the oh, room down, Natalie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, you are so welcome. Womp, womp. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we got uh, one more. It's a little, uh, little long. I really feel bad that this episode is mostly just me reading. I'm like sick. I of like, my own. Oh, they're I good like ones. It. I'm like this sick of my own voice. Um, oh, hey, <laughs> welcome to the club. Oh, uh, it's from Nicole. Misheard lyrics corrected by the songwriter himself. Uh, hey guys, this is my first time writing in. I'm new to the podcast, but I've Yay, had, had a, welcome. But I've had a thing for Brent Thank for you. a couple of years now. Makes me Yay. mad. Makes me mad. But go ahead. <laughs> I've got two misheard lyric stories for you. Uh, these are a little long, so I'll do my best. Uh, first story: My dad is a songwriter and grew up listening to Michael Jackson. Uh, one day, I was about 13, and I asked my dad about a lyric in MJ's song "Human Nature." The line is "Reaching out, I touch her shoulder." Jay, what does that sound? Like? Reaching out, I touch her shoulder. Oh, that one. It's a so happy to sing size. Go ahead. But my whole life I heard reaching out, I touch my shoulder. I kept imagining some weird trippy scene where MJ was looking at a doppelganger of himself touching his own shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> my and then the second so the second story, my ex-husband is the king of mis mishearing hearing lyrics, and it used to <laughs> irritate me severely because <laughs> when he heard what he heard was so outlandish and didn't even make sense. <laughs> One day he asked me, What's the song that goes Apple Light? Knowing he was usually way off, I ran through my mental Rolodex of all the lyrics that I could even rhyme with Apple Light. Then it hit me. Do you mean I'm all right? Apple the song Light. Worry about me. Apple Light. Apple Light instead of I'm all right. Kenny oh Loggins, the theme to Caddyshack. Oh, is that where it's from? Apple Light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh Dude, you own an electric gopher that dances that song. And how does Apple Light even make sense? Yeah, right. The next line is, nobody worry about me. Use context clues. We divorced <laughs> soon after. <laughs> uh, can't we just... Apple Light. Nobody worry about me. Uh, can't we what? see y'all in Nashville? Please let me take y'all out and buy you a drink. Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. Positively. That's it for emails. That's awesome. I love that. I love misheard lyrics. <laughs> I like the misheard out. I touch her shoulder. I like the mis uh, misheard sayings too. Those are fucking great. Yeah, those are funny. What was it? Play it by yeah, year. Miss, play it by yeah. year. Play it by, play year. by from year. From the get. I want to hear more of those. From the get go. Yeah. From the get. I'm gonna play it like 1993. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I'm all right. Nobody worry about me. I mean, the voice Why is on you point today. Give me I know. A fight. Sounds good. No, to just let me be. Apple light. All right. <laughs> 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 you guys want to go to Patreon? Let's do sure. It. Let's go over to Patreon. Come hang out with us on the Patreon. Bye. Bye. Oh, and by the way, uh, tour dates and stuff, YouTube description, iTunes description, it's all yeah. in there. Links are all there. So also, we'll come see out. some of you this week. Also, yeah. stop asking me. <laughs> this guy hit me up and said, hey, you ever been to San Diego? <laughs> if you ever go to San Diego, you got to check out the La Jolla Comedy Store. <laughs> and I had to literally message back. I'm headlining there this weekend. Just send him a link to the. To <laughs> My the name's website. on the wall. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's true. Our pay attention to the, the podcast. Wall. Read the description. It's all there. I'm gonna get dad mad at you. Pay attention. Bye. We are friends. Digging each other.